everyone, it's Aaliyah Funchal and welcome to a very special episode of Empower Women in Sports. Today's guest is such an incredible woman and honestly such a trailblazer for women in sports media and I'm so incredibly lucky that I had a chance to get to know her and interview her for this show. So without further ado, here is today's guest, Heidi Andrel. Well, Floyd, first things first, 50 and 0, how you feeling? With one of the hottest teen sensations right now, Justin how Bieber, how are you? I'm doing good. So talk about hair. Talk hair. <laughs> Look where it's come to. How has this week been different than any other fight week? Heidi and I were actually connected through a mutual friend and I had a chance to get to talk to her on Zoom, just one-on-one, -on -one, no interview or anything. And she is so down to earth and she has accomplished so much and done so much for sports media itself. And honestly, I'll let her do the talking because her story and her start in sports was not like anyone else's I've ever heard before. So here's how Heidi got started in sports. So I started in uh, a very, not the uh, exact path that most people have. I started in the aerospace business, frankly, <laughs> um, way back in the day, I was selling filtration systems for turbine engines to the military and the government. Uh, so completely the opposite of what I do now. Uh, although it was very much a male dominated field, for sure. I was definitely in the good old boys club when I worked in the aerospace business. And uh, so I, from there I was ended up on a show called The Apprentice. I was uh, one of the contestants on that show. And afterwards, um, one of the other gals who was on my season, her name is Angela Ruggiero and she's, um, you know, high up at the IOC. She was, is a four-time Olympian, played hockey at Harvard, one of the most incredible um, resumes you've ever seen <laughs> uh, and one of the sweetest people. And she, uh, her agent knew that I was from Michigan and, and they had, and, and hockey so they had given me one Anaheim Ducks playoff game in 2006 just as a fan I was pumped to go and I was brave and bold and went by myself because I only had one ticket and I marched into that suite and I didn't look at a single human I just went straight to the front row and said <laughs> um and during the intermission I got up because I had to go to the bathroom and I was headed out and I looked around and I thought, wow, this is kind of a pretty important group of people in here. And one of those people was Luke Robitaille, who had, who uh, is a Hall of Famer, played with the Red Wings. So I would, I knew who he was. And he had just taken over as the president of the Los Angeles Kings. And <clears throat> uh, LA Kings were owned by Phil Anschutz, who runs AEG. So a bunch of AEG executives were there. Uh, it was the Bauer suite. And anyway, long story short, I was like, oh, wow, I'm in, I'm in good company. I should probably be social. <laughs> I should probably not go sit up there uh, during the intermission by myself. So I started chatting with those folks and uh, lo and behold, they had asked what I was doing after the show and that they were potentially, you know, one thing led to another. And we started talking about how they wanted to create an online video network that rivaled the MLBs. Now you have to remember back then, this is how old I am. There was no online video. It didn't exist in sports. So the LA Kings wanted to be one of the first teams to take it to the NHL, to the league. And from there, and we did it. We, we created, um, after me telling them that I was not nearly experienced enough, nor equipped to actually do this, um, but I am a, good, a fast learner and I am willing to do it and taking a serious pay cut uh, to boot, but I was game and they were game to give me the chance. So we did it. I remember walking into my first day on the job with the LA Kings, you know, a little nervous, actually very nervous and unclear of exactly what I was even going to do. And I, there was a Panasonic DVX 100 camera with mini DV tapes, those old school tapes, uh, sitting on the desk. And they were like, there you go. 
<laughs> and so I, you know, read the manual. I popped the tape in. I went down to the locker room. And on my way to the locker room, I said hello to everybody. Hi, how are you? Walked into the offices, introduced myself. The faces on <laughs> the men's faces when I walked in their office, they're like, who in the heck are you and what are you doing in here? Who gave you clearance to be even in this area? And one of them was the general manager. Didn't know that, just walked in and said hello. He ended up being a really great mentor and all because of that bold willingness to walk into his office. Actually, he was more oblivious <laughs> than anything. And he used to bring me salary cap homework and put it on my desk as time went on. So he became a real um, mentor down the line. But initially it was just that it was me with a camera and I had these tapes and I'm like, I don't know how to edit. I called my friend who was an editor for Trick My Truck this show and he lived in Burbank. So I'm driving from El Segundo to Burbank, which is in traffic can be like two hours and we're editing these little pieces. And then they turned out to be kind of cool. And you know, low budget production, but they were something, they were access to the team at the time, which no one ever had. And so Fox Sports West called and said, hey, we love these little vignettes you're putting on your website. Can we use them? And I was like, yeah, if you let me throw to them. So 13 games at the intermission, it was me saying, and here's a look. <laughs> it was literally the most uh, crazy. And I guess that the reason it worked is because I was just really honest. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here, people, but I, I'm passionate about this sport. I know the sport well, and I want to give you all this access, you know, and people responded to it. So then the NHL called and said, Hey, we, we love what you're doing. Can, can you come do that for the league? And so then that's kind of how it all started. And that was in 2007. So way back in the day. And, and now, um, 14 years later, 13 years later, I am still, I'm still doing it just on a different, different sport, but I've, I've covered the gamut from since then to now. So as you can see, Heidi definitely did not have the traditional start in sports and she really just has such a charismatic aura about her and has gotten herself into situations that set her up for success in the sports industry. Something that Heidi brought up that I think is just so important is that you don't have to compromise who you are and your personality to get these experiences, but you should also try to challenge yourself and get out of your comfort zone to put you in positions to succeed. So there is a balance to that and I think she explained that perfectly. I always say the most important thing is to be you. The challenge is a lot of us, especially the young, the younger us, does not know who we are yet, right? And so I, I can say that I was totally guilty of not actually really knowing who I was, but I was really game to learn. And I knew that the only way I was gonna learn was by asking questions and by meeting people and asking those people questions and then listening and then you know actually implementing what i learned and so i think the biggest thing the most important thing is to be you you know you may not be a bubbly person that's okay just be you you may not be a person who even likes to talk to people i'm actually an introvert at, in my nature like truly i would rather be home with a book by the fire than you know, with a glass of wine, doing nothing. <laughs> but I forced myself out of my comfort zone in those situations because I really wanted it. So I think you really just need to know what what your goal is and what you're doing this for, and then call on that for strength and power in those situations when you feel uncomfortable. Earlier, Heidi mentioned that she took a huge pay cut to work in sports and to follow her dream. And as someone that posts about sports and careers all the time on TikTok and everything like that, I have people commenting so much about the salary or just the pay in sports in general. And so this is definitely something I wanted her to elaborate on even more, which is why I asked her why she took the leap of faith to follow her dreams instead of following what makes money. And her answer just gave me chills. And the pay cut she had to take was no joke. So I'll let her explain that because 
it is mind-blowing but it just goes to show that if you really want something go after it and don't be afraid to follow your dreams so I really believed, I remember sitting in a sports bar prior to getting that ticket, which is also very bizarre, but I remember sitting, having dinner with some friends and watching a game and saying, I can do that. And they all looked at me like, you're crazy. <laughs> and I was, I was like, I really believed it in my soul that I could do it. And I think, think that if you believe that you can do it, you will do it and you can do it. It's when you don't believe in yourself. And I didn't even know this at the time, but as I reflect on it now, I realized that it was that I just truly knew that I could do it and I wanted to. And so what kind of what I put my mind to, I do. And that's been my mantra for the good and the bad my entire life. And I think that uh, in terms of, I don't know if I'm answering your question, actually, I just, just that you can, I believed in myself and, and that's why I chose to do it. The pay cut, the pay cut was tough, but it made it less tough because I was having fun. I mean, if you, like I, I, and I had a legitimate, you know, quarter of a million dollar a year job. And I took a pay cut to $35,000 a year. So like when I say pay cut, I mean, real pay cut. <laughs> um, and I, I did it because I, that didn't matter to me. I really wanted to change my trajectory. And I knew that this was the way I could do it. And I knew that I wasn't going to be making $35,000 for very long. So that was just the pain point for a period of time. Right. And I, I think that uh, I really believed that I could do it and I wanted to do it. And I put the hard work in. That's, that's the other thing that I think a lot of people just don't know what comes with this is that I was going to work at eight o'clock in the morning and finishing at midnight because I would go to the office in the morning. I would work all day in the office and I would go to the game and then I'd work the game and then I'd come home and I'd do it again. And it was awesome. <laughs> I, you know, and I did it at a time where I didn't have kids. So that was possible. But um, when you find something that you really enjoy doing, it isn't work. And I know that's cliche, but it's true. So as you can tell by just Heidi speaking, she is such an inspiration and she has accomplished so much and she knows what it takes to get to the next level into your career. And that's a big reason why I wanted her on the show because she has a masterclass coming out that really teaches you the ins and outs of the industry and how to get to where she is today. So I will let her explain the masterclass and I really recommend looking into it if you're serious about breaking into sports media. Over quarantine, I started thinking to myself, okay, I have done this a really long time. I love my job. I'm grateful to still be working all of these years later. And I've been able to do it and still have a family. And I really, gratitude was my mantra of, of 2020, right? I'm just so grateful for the blessings that I have. And I started thinking, wow, I have all of this insight and knowledge and I that should not be lost on me. And I have blazed this trail, not alone, but I certainly blazed my own in, in a way that no one had done before, um, coming from aerospace into to sports. And I wished so badly for all of those years that I had someone that I could go to that was like a friend that could just, I could, it was a safe space where I could ask questions and not feel stupid because I didn't know all of the answers. And sometimes I held myself back from asking questions in certain situations, especially amongst really what I called important people, because I was afraid I would look like I wasn't equipped to do the job. And that was a terrible mindset to have in, the, in those instances. But what I, what I wished I'd had is someone I could go to and ask that question and feel safe. And someone who'd been there before, someone who actually knew the answer, not someone who worked in radio for 25 years, not someone who works in the office, someone who'd been in my shoes, who's, they, who's done it before. And I could go to them and not feel like they were competitive or you know, that I was gonna, that they were gonna say something about me. 
And a lot of that was my own mindset issue, which I've really worked on. And I talk about a lot in the masterclass um, that I'm teaching is, you know, getting your mindset straight and how to view competition and, and comparison, uh, especially in the sports world, which is where we live and breathe competition, right? Um, but how to take that out of the job and, and use it to your, as a, your power and uh, that there's room for everyone in this business, whether you believe it or not, I'm telling you, there is room for everyone. And so I talk a lot about, you know, your, your brand, how to create your 10% edge, what's going to make you stand out in this sea. Uh, we talk, we answer, we, we get into some like really key questions, um, to set goals. Uh, we reverse engineer your career from the back top backwards. Um, and we, we dive into filling your toolkit, networking, branding, interviewing, what to do in a screen test. No one told me to bring an extra shirt. Like that would have been a good idea. <laughs> uh, just like silly things like that. But who's gonna be in the room when you interview? What are they gonna require you to do? What kind of software do you need to know that before you go and test and have to you know, type your stuff out in their software? What kind of things that um, just, you know, do you need to know before you go in for an interview, how to interview and storytell to get a newsworthy and noteworthy response. All of those kinds of things. And then how to follow up and keep your network tight so that you can call on it when you need it. So those are just, that's just kind of a, a little overview of what we're doing, but um, it's a really comprehensive. I spent the past six months building it. I've interviewed heads of network, colleagues, friends of mine, talent bookers, top agents to get all of the real time insights so that you don't have to guess. All right. So after hearing her explain it, I'm sure you're like, okay, how do I sign up? So this is where you can sign up and all of the details about Heidi's masterclass. So we have a Facebook community that is uh, the Broadcaster Lab. And you can join us in the Broadcaster Lab community. That's where it's a private community, safe space. And I bet everyone who goes in there, either um, you, you, know, you need to be an aspiring broadcaster or journalist to join. And um, we, I break news there. So you'll, you'll get the first insights and you can join. You can follow us also uh, if you go to HeidiAndrel.com. That is my website. And you can join the wait list there for the class. You'll also... Be getting weekly emails. I only send one email, so uh, and I promise that there's a golden nugget in each one of them. So um, it's not just a bunch of spam. But you can sign up for that newsletter, and um, you'll get the insights there as well. So hopefully, um, I just actually got off a call with Fox. Um, we're I'm going to be teaching a masterclass for the virtual internship program for them this year as well, and uh, so we'll be doing a little bit of cross promoting there. So I'll, I'll be bringing some of those insights into the class that I teach as well uh, through the broadcaster lab. And I'm excited. I, I really have worked hard on and creating something that I feel is valuable. That is something I wished I had. And um, I'll share all of my epic fails so that you don't have to <laughs> go through them in the way that I did. So yeah, HeidiAndrel.com, you can get everything. I just wanted to thank Heidi for coming on the show because really she is such a trailblazer and I just couldn't believe the things that she did when no one else was doing it and sports media looks so different because of her and people like her that take these paths that are less traveled by. So Heidi, thank you so much for coming on the show. It is such a pleasure, always a pleasure getting to talk to you. And thank you everyone for watching this episode. I'm going to be filming more interviews and more fun things in the future. So continue to follow along on my Instagram and TikTok at Aaliyah Funshell and also on Twitter at Aaliyah Fun. All right, have a great week and thanks for watching.